what I want to do is talk a little bit about talking to the police. So in general, the way um, we have dealt with the police is, I would say, on an equal footing. So we talk to them as individuals, uh, as uh, human beings, uh, friendly, respectful, uh, but uh, without uh, vesting them with the authority that they think they have. Um, so one of the things that often happens is that, uh, again, because most people don't know their rights, uh, a lot of times the police will ask you to do things that are essentially asking you to give up your rights. So for example, um, uh, you don't have to demonstrate in a pen. If the police set up a pen at a place where you're doing a demonstration, you can demonstrate across the street instead. You don't have to, or up the block or down the block, you don't have to go into that pen. But the police will often tell people, if you want to demonstrate, you have to go into the pen. And then you have to say, uh, you and I both know that uh, we have the option to go into the pen, but that if the sidewalk is open to any other pedestrian, it's also open to us as demonstrators. So unless the sidewalk is frozen to all pedestrians, for example, when the president comes to town and they'll say no pedestrians on the east side of Fifth Avenue be by Trump Tower, but you have pedestrians on the west side of Fifth Avenue, then you can demonstrate on the west side of Fifth Avenue. You don't have to be in a pen two blocks away. So a lot of what you need to do as a marshal is to say, uh, we have a right to do this. Um, and, uh, and to also understand the hierarchy of the police, which are blue shirts, and white shirts. And so uh, uh, the blue shirts are the street patrol, um, and they're just following orders. Uh, and the white shirts are more in control. And so if someone in a blue shirt, a patrol person comes up and says, you can't leaflet here, you can't, you have to go in the pen, uh, you, can, you can have that discussion with them. And if, what they'll probably say is, my commanding officer said that you, to get everybody in the pen. And then what you need to say to them is, I think you need to go back to your commanding officer and tell them that we're saying that we have a right to be where we are. And so the best scenario in this kind of situation is to let them save face. So you give them an, offer, an opportunity to leave instead of continuing the argument. So you're always looking to uh, hold your ground but de-escalate the argument, because you don't want to escalate an argument with a police officer. Um, you can also say, what, do me a favor, bring your commanding officer over, over to me and I'll have that discussion with them. Um, in my experience, most of that time, that takes care of whatever problem it is. And everybody is satisfied. Um, Sometimes you just have to keep uh, arguing. In general, blue shirts will not arrest unless they have been given a direct order to arrest by a white shirt. So it's safe to have that discussion with them as long as you uh, do not touch them. So uh, as a marshal and as a demonstrator and as a civilian, uh, you never want to touch a police officer because even a, listen, that's just not, that's a felony assault on an officer, okay? So you really want, particularly for someone who talks with their hands a lot, like I do, you want to um, watch your body language uh, when you're dealing with the police. Can I, how would a police officer know if I'm a marshal? Okay, because uh, marshals usually are wearing some identifying piece of clothing, whether it's an armband, a hat, or a vest. Plus, if, let's say, you're at a demonstration and you see, you see someone leafleting, you know, and it may be someone from uh, 
uh, a socialist party trying to get people to take their newspaper. It might be someone uh, trying to leaflet for another event. It may be someone you agree with or disagree with, but they're there doing their thing. And if a police officer comes up to them and you see that happening as a marshal, you should really go over there and see what's going on because we really don't want the police dealing with our demonstrators. We, we want the marshals dealing with the demonstrators and the police to deal with the marshals. So that's how they would also know that you are a marshal. And, and the reason that we use things like armbands as opposed to using something really big is that we're part of the demonstration. We don't want to make a big distinction, like the police make a big distinction between the police and the demonstrators. We don't want to make a big distinction between the marshals and the demonstrators. We're part of the demonstration. We're just, we have a specific role in it. Um, yeah. Um, earlier you mentioned that you did a permit for street closures, and I'm just wondering if it's possible that the police could say, you're not going to demonstrate because this requires street closures and you don't have a permit. So this, that's at the point where you say, so we've got 5,000 people here. We can march them on the sidewalk, but let me tell you that it will be easier for you as NYPD if you give us two lanes of 7th Avenue, one lane for the marchers, one lane for the police, the other lanes for through traffic, and we will march from here down to Union Square and we will be out of your hair in an hour. However, if you say we have to march on the sidewalk, we're going to be gumming stuff up for, it's going to take us like three hours to get out of here. And, you know, it, ultimately, officer, it is your choice, but, uh, and if, if we have trouble getting people out on 7th Avenue, we'll bring some people over to 6th Avenue, and we'll bring some people over to 5th Avenue, and you'll have three avenues <laughs> worth of sidewalk marches going downtown, and I think it would be easier for all of us if you give us the one lane of traffic for the marchers, one lane for the police, we'll do our best to keep everybody uh, in line, and sorry we didn't expect so many people. And that's, you know, and, and, and that's what you do, and you, you make it, um, and it really wouldn't be hard for us to send the first 5,000 people down 7th Avenue while we bring a whole bunch of other people down one block over to 6th Avenue and start marching them down 6th Avenue and bring another bunch of people down 5th Avenue. Kind of awesome. Yeah, I mean, but, it, but it's, and that's totally legal, but it's a total nightmare for the police because they don't have enough people for that. Right. Right. I mean, but also, I mean, for them, if they've got 20,000, even if they have like 5,000 people, they can't arrest 5,000 people. They can't. They, they don't have enough. They, they, you know, they, right. I mean, they, you know, they can, they can arrest maybe 300 people, three or 400 people, but they really can't do 5,000 people. They don't have the, the, the place to put them. They don't have the staff to do it. So, you know, the, the, you know, so they're in, a, they're in a bad position, you know, which, which is that if they don't let people march, people are going to start marching on their own. And we're going to tell them, listen, if you don't let us march, we're just going to start marching on the sidewalks and tell people to march on the sidewalks down to Union Square by whatever avenue they find room on. And that's totally legal. And we'll just tell them, make sure you obey the, 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 the walks, you know, the walk don't walk signs. It's totally legit. And that's like the worst scenario for them because then they're going to have like 5,000 people running around Midtown with signs chanting on their way to Union Square. So that's, 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 but the negotiation and how you talk to them and you know, it, it, and you, again, it's like you do it on a friendly, honest, unthreatening, direct level. And you tell them, listen, you know, give us 10 minutes, you know, and, and, you know, give us some time and we'll organize and we'll let people know what's going on. And you tell us when you're ready for us to go into 7th Avenue.
and and you know, and we'll tr again we'll try to marshal it and we'll try to keep it as safe and orderly um, as we can because we don't want to you know no one here wants uh, wants arrests. Uh, a few months ago, I got in a rather heated discussion with a uh, detective from Midtown about whether the plaza in front of Fox News was private property or whether it was a, publicly, a privately operated public space, which is an area that the building got a tax break in order to put public amenities in so that the public could enjoy it. And I knew for a fact that that plaza was a privately operated public space and we had a right to be there. And he kept threatening to arrest us. And I was like, I'm going to move the demo because you're threatening to arrest us and I know we have a right to be here. Um, and I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt that you really think that the building management is telling you the truth when they're saying it's private property and not part of the public space. I said, and give me your business card and I will send you the information tomorrow and then we can, you know, we can get this resolved. Because I didn't want people to take a bus. But I, and, but I didn't want to like just let him get away with getting us out. And he apologized the next time I saw him because he got the information and the building management had lied to him and he was pissed off. <laughs> no, because yeah. had he arrested us, on it's on him. And you know, it would have been a good case for us. But so it's always important as a demonstrator to know your rights, to know where you have a right to be, what kind of place you're in, um, to treat the police respectfully. And then at some point you have to make a decision about whether, you know, how strongly you hold on to it. Now the next time if I went back and we've had all these discussions and they try to kick us off again, I'm like, we've had this discussion before. So at fam families belong together, Mark, we had a situation where they had pinned uh, pretty much the entire Foley Square uh, on the uh, west side, all the way up. And uh, it was, you remember it was extremely hot that day, anybody who was there. Uh, and so the marshals, we actually asked the police, can we separate these barricades so that people can get out? And they said, yeah, go ahead. They, they realized they'd made a mistake. Um, so in some cases, uh, you know, you can, you can negotiate with the police even in that, in that circumstance. 